Well, since we're pulling the pan, I gotta pull the motor mounts. Not technically, but one of these bends just sticks just past it. So I'd rather try and not uh, have issues with that. For two quick bolts, not that big of a deal. Yank the fuel pump off of this as well. While we're at it. Already got a holly pump on here, so that should be fine for the heads. And then, I got a coil bracket. The last of my problems. For now. With some super high quality uh, garage built spacer action going on right there. Now we can do the heads. Let me figure out how to resituate here and pop these valve covers off. Okay, valve covers. If I cared enough, I would take a little bit of scotch bright or uh, not scotch bright, but steel wool. Actually, clean up all the surface rust and show off these arson covers. But who does that? Yeah. One more on the other side, same thing. Daddy's going to polish these up later. She likes making things look nice and shiny. I could care less. Now we're on the valve train. This is a roller cam, so push rod orientation and lifter orientation is not nearly as important as it was if it were a flat tappet. So what that means is I'm just going to bust all of these loose, let the push rods fall where they are, zip tie them together, throw them in a bag, label them with the lifters because all of these are getting replaced with the trick flow stuff. So a couple trains of thought here on disassembly. There's a lot of ways to do it. I'm just going to take the tension off. I don't really care what kind of wear. It's a roller cam. So I need a big gallon bag. Let me find something here. I'm throwing all of this stuff in one big one gallon bag. I'll label it for what it came out of. What it's for. Yeah. Pine needle. Bag and tag all of this, and by bag and tag, I mean stock E7 heads, stock push rod, stock cam, all of that will go together. So I do have the luxury of knowing when I bought this motor, this was, I literally bought this motor for the transmission, the motor pretty much came with it. 89 Mustang, bag and tag all of it, because I don't need any of these things anymore. If you're a purist, I think in theory you're supposed to try and keep all of these the same, but whatever. Roller. Roller life. I would not be doing this at all if it were a flat tap it. I promise. But I just slapped all these together so the orientation at this point doesn't really matter all that much. So bagged and tagged. We'll do the same thing on the other side. Motor ran good, was good. If anybody's looking for a stock set of roller drivetrain or valve train stuff, let me know. I'll mail it to you. Yay. Bagged and tagged the heads. I just remembered. I installed trick flow heads on here, uh, or valve springs, duals. So I gotta figure that one out. I'm guessing the trick flow stuff. I'm going to run the new trick flow heads with the valves that are in there. But I do need to put a mark on here. So I know I got lots of heads laying around. There's another set of E7s over there too. So I will have to label those. Just keep everything 
fresh and organized because I don't know, that's what I have on there. Whatever this part number is underneath here. I got the box. So I'll just stamp TF VS Trick Low Valve Springs. Hopefully that makes sense for me down the line. Let's see how good my drawing skills are today. T F V S Just write springs over here. Springs plus springs. And I put everything on the internet now for the entire world to see. So if I get stuck, I can go back and rewatch the same video and know that these are upgraded. Okay, now we are down to simply just the head bolts. All the spring pressure is off from the valve train. So these can come off. You got your lowers, you got your uppers. Not retorquing, I'm literally blasting this apart and slapping it right back together. So hopefully this should be just fine. I already blast the heads apart. My buddy just messaged me. He said he's gonna be here in, I don't know, half hour or so. So there's a good chance this video might get cut into two parts. I'm gonna try and get this motor all assembled, but I'm not sure how long we're gonna keep going or how far I'm gonna get. I've given up on the idea of putting the motor back in the car for today. We're going to be entertaining. Daddy's got some friends coming over, and then my parents decided they're coming over too. So, just made a new grill, or put together a new grill. So, we're going to do some burgers and brats and things. I will get the heads off of this and start scraping now until he gets here. And uh, we'll kind of see what happens. So, if this is part one, I apologize. Part two will be the fun part. But ideally, if I can get all of this back together, motor ready to go in. I'm feeling pretty good for the weekend. And then I'll try and relax and have a good time without having to physically hurt myself and exert any energy drinking beers and eating hot dogs. Yay. Since we have the motor up on a stand, I got a screwdriver in the pinhole, handles on there. Grab your half inch, 11 sixteenths on the head bolts. I'm gonna break them free and then come back with the impact. Like I said, it's not a bad idea to do all of these by hand, untorque everything, but we're putting different head bolts in here already. I got some new ones. I don't even know where I put those. I got a brand new box, ARP head bolts, not studs. Wouldn't be a bad idea to go for studs, but I didn't want to spend the money. This is a budget build after all. If it's a problem and I start popping head gaskets, then I'll look into doing that. Or when we go around to turboing this, I got a good set of bolts and uh, that'll go into another motor and we'll put studs in. I gotta look up the torque specs on here too. Ooh, that one was a little loose. Which is why I like breaking these free by hand because it should feel about the same on all of them. And if they're not, I messed up on torquing. Once the torque's broken, it doesn't really matter nearly as much. So, we'll swap back over to the drill. Okay. Now, I'm gonna pull the screwdriver here a little. The other side's still bolted in, this one's not. We're gonna do a little bit of a tip on this. Tell me that, internet. I was say, that should be free. Uh, and then on the back side of the head, I don't know if you guys can see this. There's this little notch right here on this and the end of the uh, crank. Crank. Losing you. Always entertaining. There's a boss on the bottom of the head right here, and then you get a flat machine section on the Block. Yeah, losing my mind. There we go. 
bolts can all stay in. Those are good heads. Actually, this motor doesn't look too bad. I don't know what that is. A little bit of crap on there. First look, after running, honing marks are still really nice. Looks like a fresh rebuild to me. Don't know what that little bit in the cylinder was. These pistons were all cleaned up. Definitely a little on the black side, but overall, I think that looks pretty good. Let you guys get a closer look. Maybe you know better than I do, and by that I mean you probably do. Because I don't really know anything. But bores look good so far. So we'll do the same thing on the other side real quick. Then once it's all apart, I'll flip the block over and make a big old mess. Ooh. Also, I might need the little block offs off of these heads because I think he said he had them still hooked up at the crossover tube or whatever the smog crap is. I got little block off plates here and on the other head. We'll have to grab some RTV. I didn't check on RTV either. Hmm. That's kind of an issue or maybe an issue. But same thing. Just use the block to pry that up there. Now we're free. I got another set of cast iron ports to block. Ooh, big old chunk of coolant passage being blocked right there. We'll get rid of that. A little bit of crap in here. Not terrible. They're pretty comparable in terms of aesthetics. I think they both look pretty close. A little water, but that might just be for me pulling this off. Either way, it's a junkyard motor quickly rebuilt. No money spent other than bearings and I did redo everything, rod bearings, cam bearings, main bearings, and rings, but no machining, so I don't have that much into this at all. Let's see what the uh, old girl's gonna do with some heads that actually breathe. Cannot wait. Now we're at the messy portion of the build. The block still has a ton of coolant in it. I'm just gonna tip all this right into the pan, slowly to try and keep it all in. Nice and rusty on the bottom side of the block. You can just set it anywhere. Right on top of that motor is fine. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, this thing's just going to drain for a little bit, so try and get more of this to pour into the bucket. Throw another pig mat down and call it good. Patience is a virtue that I don't have, but I got to be kind of cautious with the coolant. If you have dogs, dogs like the smell of coolant because it's sweet. Maybe they'll avoid the rusty crap, but we'll let this drain. We'll be right back. I'm really impressed with Jeff Bezos on this one. I got a little tipsy and ordered some parts that I don't necessarily need. They said it wasn't going to be here till Monday. I got a couple different intake options, which we're going to address now because this just showed up. I'm cheap. I'm not spending four or five hundred bucks on an Edelbrock one or a Victor Jr. Torker or any of those things, or not the Torker, but I got a used Torker, OG version, single plane, vintage, greatest manifold ever made, absolutely not. Good for stock heads-ish from what I hear, a lot of people say they're boat anchors, it's old antiquated technology but it's a cool little wall piece and I have enough motors where I can play around with them and it's not that big of a deal on the intake side. Then I went on the old Amazon, they had a single plane air gap for a small block Ford for $170, $68? I have no idea. I will let you guys know what the boss is, how they all work, what threads are messed up, how thin the porting is, and we'll take a closer look later. Do plan on getting this Falcon up to the track. 
so I can run maybe the, I'll probably run the dual plane that's already on it that we just yanked off. That's a Chinese repop too, but run that dual plane first because I know it's all good and it all worked. Now we have heads and a cam. Single plane seemed the way to go in my head based on my understanding of things. Why I got that one. Used vintage, 100 bucks. For 189, I can get a brand new one. I had no idea they even had those. So, I don't know, rolling the dice on Chinese parts. I'm not expecting wonders and amazing dyno numbers or track time increases or anything like that, but maybe I'll put the dual plane back on. We'll discuss that later. I got the motor flipped over. It kind of stopped peeing all over the place. So I did have studs in the timing cover. Timing covers, rather. But that one's got to get re-loctited in, so we'll make sure we do that. Just regular bolts in the rest of the oil pan. Looks like I lost one of them, too. So we'll pop the pan off now, yank the bolts off, pull the timing cover, and then we can start playing around with camshafts. Grab two sockets, 7 16 for the short ones. It is half inch, I believe, on the back rail. So, like I said, these should... I thought I had studs in here, but I think that's actually the other block. In retrospect... So grab all the oil pan bolts and put these up on the workbench. Try and get some of the oil off of them. Doesn't look too shabby in here. A little bit of silicone down at the bottom. One piece gasket's gonna be much easier to put back together. Then we'll just have to break clean these, RTV the corners. And those will go back in. Not doing much on the bottom end. It's just, while it's here, you might as well look at it. That's the extent of it. I'm not retorquing or anything. If it blows up down the line, because I didn't do that, that's on me. But I'm fairly certain everything's set up pretty well on here and it is a stock motor on the bottom end so not too much to worry about there now timing cover is broken free we should be able to just kind of jiggle and wrestle this out like i said it is studs on the motor i'm gonna put a screwdriver in here pry this up a little bit to get some of that silicone up on that bottom corner all of which we get to clean out But reusable gaskets, that saves some cash and some, well, not really time, but it does save us some money. I don't think the oil pan actually had to come off for this. I probably could have wrestled it, but it's hard when you're fighting the studs and the oil pan's still fixed. This way, much easier. And then I'll double check on the timing kit. If I have a seal, we're swapping this. Other than that, I just got some silicone cleanup. Now we're at the cleanup phase. Gasket for the fuel pump is still good, so we're gonna rerun that. And now we get to yank the timing set out. All right, well, I changed my mind. Instead of pulling the timing cover off, I'm actually gonna go through and start trying to deep clean some of the gasket surfaces. Just prep that first. Then we yank the cam out, slap that all back together, and start putting go fast parts back on. In the cleaning process, gasket scraped all the silicone off of the oil pan surface. So now we're onto the timing cover. Gotta get all of this out. Peeled up pretty good, like I said. This motor is not that old, nor does it have that much run time on it. So everything should be in pretty decent shape. Um, I did double RTV this one, so we're gonna have to rescrape quite a bit on the timing cover. Three quarters of it came off here in one chunk. Try and see how gentle I can be here. Nope. So I'll yank the timing set first, and then we'll get to gasket scraping this front dress area. Front timing cover, we got one 9 16 socket. I left my drill over here. Alrighty. So the fuel pump, eccentric or whatever the hell they call it. I don't know. There's the fuel pump stuff. It's basically just an oval pulley circle, oval, and as it walks around, pushes and pulls on the fuel pump arm. So then, Try and slide this off of here. Splasher. Do 
do not have a new one of these, so we gotta reuse it. Hopefully we can get this off nice and semi-even. There we go. I'm just making a pile of the order of parts down here. Because this shouldn't have to be on off of this motor for that long. And start prying some stuff on the back side here. Try and walk the timing set off. This is all new, so I'm not redoing a timing set. If you are doing this on an older motor or a higher mileage motor, this would be a great time to replace your timing set. Pretty loose up top. Try the wiggle technique here. Bottoms off, perfect. On the van, I wanna do this exact same thing, but this is a three-way keyway, so it's got an advanced and a retard, I believe this arrow. I would essentially run this the same way, but I would turn this to there. We're gonna retime everything when this all goes back together with the new cam. So in terms of the camshaft, got two bolts, and then some wrestling to do. And put two seven sixteenths bolts. Drop these out of here. Keep them in the same orientation. If you don't know which one's which, you got an oil passage, and they tell you back bottom, just to make it easy on you. Now we'll grab a screwdriver, slap this through here, and try and walk this cam out as gently as possible. No. I don't want that one to be one. Let me grab a bolt. Three-eighths thread on the cam. And we gotta be a little gentle here. Come on. There we go. Yeah, two seconds. Use that bolt as leverage. You don't want the cam lobes to nick anything coming out of here. Gentle, gentle. Gentle, gentle. There we have it. This will go right with the lifter bag. And then we'll grab our new parts. Oh, we're gonna throw the camshaft in. My buddy that I've been saying is coming over just called me. Decided to take a bike that's been sitting for, what did he move, five, six years ago? Sitting in his parents' garage forever. Fired it up, ran fine. Halfway here, so he's broken down. Time to jump in the rescue truck. Don't know how far we're gonna get on this tonight. So thanks for watching, like, comment, subscribe. Maybe we'll have some fun shorts and I can make fun of him. Haven't seen him in years, so why not give him crap for taking out a bike and having it break down? That's the fun part of all of this, isn't it? Anyways, lots more on this Ford coming because I need to get jamming on this. I hate having dead cars in the driveway. So, we will wrap this one up. I'm going to leave this giant mess and we'll see. He might spend the night, might not. We might be out here wrenching until 1, 2 in the morning. Who knows? It's one of those situations. So, we'll catch you guys later.